Hey everyone, Fouad here with another video. Uh, today we have a special topic which is how to show respect to your Arab men. It was a suggestion by one of you and uh, actually it's funny because after I went through the things I will be discussing today, I realized that most of them can be perceived as respect by almost every man. Some of them will be more valuable by Arab men, but I think all in all they, they will be perceived by any man as an act of respect. Before we dive into the video, I want you to neutralize your emotions. Don't think about a failed relationship. Don't think about someone who disappointed you. Not all men are twisted. And if your relationship right now lacks respect, it doesn't mean that respect cannot be cultivated. I want you to consider the points I will be addressing today with an open mind, with a positive mindset, with an intention to, to learn something new from them. And with that being said, let's dive into the video. First thing first is politeness and courtesy. Learn how to be diplomatic with your men. The basis of this point is effective communication. Your communication with your men is not just about what you say. There are also some non-verbal cues that a man can read on you and see as disrespectful, such as rolling your eyes when you don't like something, such as leaving the room and he's still talking to you, such as giving him your back when he's still talking to you, such as ignoring him and not acknowledging him when he's talking to you until he repeats himself two or three times. And sometimes the disrespect can be verbally by engaging in a passive aggressive style of communication, throwing some silly comments on him, and the list goes on and on. So part of being respectful to your man is to avoid doing these things. And I think that if both the man and the woman are mature enough, they can avoid a lot of problems and they can also maintain respect within the relationship. But sometimes it's life. The man can be maybe less mature than you or he can be maybe more stressed than you. And here it's your turn to save this relationship, to save the respect that is within this relationship. If he cannot control his temper, if he is reactive, he can't control his emotions, it's your turn to delay the discussion to another time so that you don't get into pointing fingers and calling each other names. You don't want to do that. I'm a firm believer that preventing is better than curing and also part of Avoiding the disrespect, avoiding the arguments is also to communicate to your man when you feel that you don't want to talk, when you feel that you you are not in the mood of doing anything. It's good to communicate to him, tell him that, hey, I'm having a bad day. I don't want you to think that it's about you. It's just something personal. I'm going through something and I will be able to discuss this with you tomorrow or when I feel I can discuss this with you, I will come and approach you and I will talk with you about it. And the most important part of communication are the things that are not said. This gesture, the fact that you went to him and told him that you're feeling bad so that you don't argue over a trivial thing when he comes and talks to you is a gesture of respect, is an act of respect. It's a diplomatic way of telling him, don't break my head, don't give me a headache today. I'm having enough today. Today, I'm not ready for you. So preventing arguments this way is extremely effective and also shows the man how wise you are. And it also tells him that you need help. He'll be more likely to speak with you and to understand what you're going through. Another point is if you know that a point was made and it's not accurate, but at the same time it's not significant, don't prove him wrong. And this is in life in general, even your boss. If he points at something that is not correct, you'd rather ask a question and make him understand himself that he is wrong than telling him, no, you are wrong. So with your man, you should be even more careful because he is your man. Be looking up to him. He should be your idol. He should be your guru. So don't tell him, no, you're wrong. If it's something important, yes, you can be more overt about t telling him that you think it's otherwise. But if it's something insignificant, don't try to prove him wrong. Another act of respect is when you ask his opinion about something. If you ask him questions that you know he will have the answers to. So this is how you, you be polite with your man. In case you want to give him advice, don't give him advice publicly. Don't give him advice in front of the kids. Don't give him advice in front of other people. Advice, a piece of advice should be always given privately. Because if it's not given privately, it's an attack. It's not a piece of advice, it's an attack. So this is extremely important when you want to give a piece of advice or when you want to constructively criticize something about your man. The second point is show gratitude and avoid complaining. In the Arab household, we all know that a man is responsible of taking care of the house, providing for the family, 
and all that good stuff. But this should not overshadow the importance of showing gratitude and appreciation to the man when he is doing his job. However, what hurts the man the most is not when the woman doesn't show appreciation, but when she starts adding insult to injury by complaining about things he doesn't do enough. She forgets all the good stuff because of one thing that is missing. This is extremely painful when your woman is ungrateful and she's not just ungrateful but she is complaining so always show appreciation appreciate the little things and usually human beings they don't value the things they have until they lose them and so we want here to be smart and value what we have and be mindful about them doesn't it make you feel good when someone comes to you and tell you nice meal i love the meal it was delicious the same thing is for the man if you want to show him respect appreciate the little things that he does and appreciate more the bigger things that he does don't approach things with a negative tone approach them with a constructive positive tone instead and also regarding complaining avoid speaking poorly about him in front of your kids you want to maintain his authority in the family especially when it comes to kids when he tells the kid to do something he is his father he knows he wants his benefit as well as you do so when he tells them to do something don't break his, his rules, don't break his word, because if you do so, even the kids will disrespect him. And if the kids disrespect the father, one day they will come and they will start to disrespect you as well. So avoid doing that and avoid bringing any topics that will put the father in any negative light in the eyes of the kids. Point number three, what happens in the house remains in the house. Maintaining privacy and confidentiality within your relationship is crucial. Whatever that happens between you and your partner, whether good or bad, everything should remain within the confines of your home. In extreme cases where you cannot handle a conflict with him or an argument with him and you need a mediator, then okay, you can reach your parents maybe or a person that you trust in your family, but not your neighbor, not your friend. And I always stress the importance of not taking advice from friends because I know from experience that a lot of women are jealous of women who are doing well with their partner, especially single women. They secretly envy the relationship that the other woman has with her partner. I strongly say that because I have seen a lot of things when it comes to friends and how they give advice when it comes to relationships. And when you're gossiping with someone who doesn't have your best interest, things are not going to go in your favor. Because you are not doing well in your relationship and you are now vulnerable so you can digest bad ideas and implement them. So don't ever disclose what's happening in your house with this woman who enjoys, first of all, drama and the th uh, second of all, they will enjoy the bad news that you're already going to be on the same boat that they are. Don't ever put yourself in this situation. Choose wisely from whom you take advice. Choose wisely from whom you ask for help. The friend you told her to not tell anyone she will also tell a friend to not tell anyone. And this will go in circles until the man hears that what is happening in the house is already known outside. Point number four, be submissive. I know this is not a thing that many women want to do, but if you are with an Arab man, you need to be submissive. You need to respect his decision. You need to ask for his permission to do certain things. This is part of being with an Arab man. Be submissive, trust his decision. Even if he tells you to not do things that go against your desires, try to understand his reasons. You trusted him with yourself when you married him. Why not trust his decisions? But if you feel the need to discuss or negotiate, choose the appropriate time and atmosphere to address this matter. Don't just go randomly at the same time when he refused talk about it and try to, to convince him. Don't do that. And of course, don't put him in difficult situations where you you come and you're already dressed up and you, you don't care. You're ready to go against his wishes. This is for sure disrespectful. And the way to be respectful about this entire point is to listen to your man. Don't say I'm equal or I can't be submissive. Why am I submissive? We are equal. I do what I want. You do what you want. That's not how an Arab household is led. Point number five is universal and it is extremely important. You got married, you were beautiful. This does not mean that after a few years or after one year, you will stop caring about your, your health, about your fitness, 
about your beauty, your hygiene. If you want him to respect you, if you want to show respect to him, don't let him notice things and point things out before you do them. I don't want to go into details, but I'm sure you know what I mean. Hygiene is important. Your beauty is important. Your body is important. Take care of all of these things. Your physical beauty, your mental health as well. What you consume, the sugar you eat. Don't eat a lot of sugar. It affects your mental health. It affects your mood. Cut the sugar out. The same way you used to take care of yourself when you were single. Take care of yourself when you are married. And this is a sign of respect to your man. The same for sure applies to the man as he needs also to maintain his physical health. He needs to be always fit, groomed, healthy, smelling well. When was the last time you just put something, you dressed something well for you, at home for your man? This is a sign of respect to your man. Dress nice for him, smell nice for him. And another problem is women when they give birth, they forget about all these things. I look up always uh, to women who within one year, they they come back to their to their shape before they get, they got pregnant. I look up for them because this is this is also respect to yourself and to your man. You giving birth to a baby does not mean that you'll become obese now on. So take care of yourself, take care of your body, take care of your health, your mental health, your physical health, and your appearance for sure. Your hygiene is important. Point number six, to show him respect, be available to him. And here available, I mean the intimacy. There should be there some physical connection between you and him. You are his wife. And if you don't want him to look out of the marriage to fulfill his primal desires, then you will have to be available to him. You can have excuses that you are tired, that you can't, or that you... I don't know what type of excuses that uh, might delay these things to be only once a month, but you need to be available to him. Because if you do otherwise, this is disrespectful to the man. And it shouldn't come across as a chore when you are with your man. These moments are to strengthen the bond between you and him in the relationship. So prioritize your connection, prioritize your sexual experience with him. Even if you are tired or you have valid excuses, make a plan for it. 